Hi, I am Rochelle for 5 out of 4 and I am going to show you today how to do a tin foil crotch curve for your pants fitting. First thing you're going to need is either tin foil or a flexible ruler. The flexible ruler will hold its shape a lot better, but tin foil is a lot more accessible. You're going to roll your tin foil into a tube. I've got about two feet of it here. And then you are going to put a clip or mark it somehow where your inseam is going to be. I use a clip for the tin foil or a rubber band for my flexible ruler. Okay, now you're going to put this piece between your legs and you're going to get a little intimate here. Your clip is going to go on your inseam so that you have an idea of where this is. When you are doing this, make sure you are wearing a pair of leggings or other tight fitting pants so that you can get a good mold of what you, what you want. So you're going to mold this here to your undercarriage, just like this, so it comes up the back. And then, and this is kind of the hard part, especially for me because I've used this piece of tin foil a lot, so it's not going to keep its shape very well at this point. So you need to take it out from under you and lay it down on a piece of paper. So you can see I have already done this twice. That's where my other two marks are here, the purple and the green. I suggest that you do it probably three times um, just to get yourself an average because tin foil does move a lot. If you look at my flexible ruler, you can see it's a little bit different and it does actually hold its shape a little bit better. But we're getting here, so I'll draw this third one. Oops. Okay, what I want to make sure I am doing is I am marking my inseam, my front, and my back so that I can remember which is which when I come to do this. So if I put my inseam here on this, you can see it's an approximate shape of the same. This is not an exact science at all. We are just trying to improve your pants fit overall and then you can make more tweaks if necessary. So then you're gonna cut the average. So something like this would come out of mine. So I did it with my flexible ruler three times here and you can see this is a lot more accurate as to how I'm going to look. So front, inseam, and back. This is my crotch curve. Now we're going to take our pieces of paper. This is our pattern. I have traced it onto tissue paper so that you can see better what I am doing. This is my front, this is my back. I want to overlap right here at where the crotch points come together by the seam allowance. This pattern has a 3 8 seam allowance. So I'm going to put my ruler down and know that this approximately is my overlap point so that my seams come together. You want to make sure right here is flat. Every pattern should be flat here. It's called truing your seams. So that when these two points come together, you don't get funny f dips or points. If your pattern is up like this, you're gonna get a funny point. If it's down like this, you're gonna get a funny dip. They need to be relatively flat, like you would if you put them together. Don't worry about what's going on down here in the legs. That is not part of what we need to be worried about. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here just so it holds my pieces together while I am working. And just for fun, let's just, let's just take a look here. There's my crotch curve. You can see that it's a little bit different. A little bit in the front, a lot in the back. 
which makes sense if you look at the blog piece which is linked to this video you will see that I have made there are pictures of my muslin where you can see that I have a flat pubis which means that my pubic bones are set further back than an average crotch curve and I also have a low booty uh, coupled with full outer thighs otherwise known as saddlebags which is a fabulous way of talking about my rear end but there it is so next thing you're gonna do take that piece of paper and slide it in here behind you're going to match up your inseam try and rotate it a bit so that you get a somewhat flat right here again this is not an exact science we are there's a lot of art and intuition involved in this, but it does not hurt to try and see what, if it makes it better. So, I'm going to trace my curve, starting from here all the way through. So there it is. There's my, my booty compared to an average pair of drafted pants. We can see why the pants don't fit me the way they're supposed to. So I am not terribly concerned about what's going on up here. These are your front rise and your back rise and it's somewhat of an independent thing. Um, my pelvis does tilt forward, which contributes to this whole thing, and also I have a sway back here that I will have to address separately. And it, it doesn't matter on this particular, on the curve, it matters overall in my pants fitting. So we can't have this curve be quite so dramatic when it comes in here. You don't want this angle. So this is where you get your third marker out and you do some smoothing. So this right here is about a quarter inch ish a little bit more a little bit less but it measures about a quarter of an inch so I want to smooth that in so I just kind of like that so the curve is much smoother and it is taking out the most here and then smoothing it back in now the back's going to be a little harder because there's a lot more back here. So you look at this, I have roughly an inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths, something like that. My intuition is telling me I don't need quite that much in there. And for various reasons later, um, I can add more in if necessary. One thing I would suggest you do before you start messing with this back curve and your front curve, if it ends up being necessary, take your long ruler. It's actually probably more helpful to do beforehand, but I didn't. And I'm going to draw a horizontal line this way. And then a corresponding vertical line from my back rise down this way. I want to keep my curve adjustments within this line for right for what I need to do here. So I am going to see this is down below it. If I had drawn my line first, I would have tilted my piece to be up on this. So I'm just gonna kind of make an approximation of this. I'm not gonna do the full inch, I'm a full inch and however, I'm probably going to go about an inch, which is about there. And your line is not set in stone. You can change it if you don't like it after you draw it. That's why I suggest doing it in pencil. I'm doing it in pen because I'm a rebel. So you're going to blend it back up into your back rise, just like that. Okay. There we go. That is my new back crotch curve and my new front crotch curve. Now for me, because I have a full booty, I need to add this amount back onto the outseam. 
because this is actually, it's giving you more room, but it's taking away the width of fabric. If you have a flat booty, you may not need to do this, or you might need less room, or you might need to take out less, or put less on here if you have a flat booty. For me, I have a full booty. I need the room. So I am going to then measure out an inch or so and do the same thing where I'm going to add my fabric back on and then blend it back down into my thigh area. Okay, that's it. That is my new pattern piece. So I will cut this out and I will make a new muslin and I will try it on and I will see how my alterations affected my fit compared to my first muslin. Um, with this particular one, when I made my second one, I still had to make my sway back adjustments and I ended up having to slim my thighs below where I needed to add to bring everything back in because I am all one size except for around the lower end of my bum, which ends up being a lot bigger. And that's it. So go try it. See what happens. It's a fun experiment if nothing else. Thanks so much for being here with me. And cut.